Hello and welcome to Backseat Designers. It's a podcast uh, and uh, you may be wondering what the hell you've just tuned into and I will explain in due time. But first, let me introduce my two wonderful co-hosts. Uh, first, we have a man whose uh, speech pattern sounds like a 45 RPM record played at 33 and a third RPM, Frederick Olsen. Say hello, Fred. Hello. Ah, oh, fuck it. Hello. <laughs> And we also have a man whose sole uh, mood state is that of mild disgust. We have Dr. Gareth Millwood. Say hello, Gareth. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You sure weren't bluffing. Oh, yes. And I will just briefly explain, because you may be listening to this and wondering what the hell you've just tuned into. Uh, fact of the matter is, we've actually been doing this podcast for quite a while we started oh way back when i was just getting started on youtube it used to be just me phoning up frederick and we'd like literally record record the phone call uh sometimes it would work sometimes it wouldn't yeah that's it's actually the 10th anniversary of the first season good lord wow really 10 years yeah Yeah, it's uh, it's, that's frightening to think of isn't it and we did. Uh, we, we've done five seasons of this podcast, and uh, at some point, I think it was season three or four. You'll have to remind me. We brought Gareth on because things were slowly starting to spiral out of control for me and Frederick. Yeah, I very much steadied the ship. I think. <laughs> yeah, it was three. Um, yeah, yeah. We uh, brought someone aboard who was not a raging alcoholic, or wasn't <laughs> at that point. I don't. I, know. D- I don't know. Se- season three got a bit dicey. <laughs> was it oh that was season two wasn't it oh yeah that, that that never go and listen to that in fact if you want to go and listen to previous seasons of this podcast uh you can go to our youtube channel our old youtube channel uh youtube.com slash backseat designers which we will now uh have renamed as the bsd archive because this podcast will henceforth be released on my youtube channel because in the interim uh my youtube channel seems to have gotten some mildly positive response so what is it uh 100 000 subscribers <laughs> i believe you told everyone at the, the adventure game fan yeah. Yeah. and why not well thanks just keep for adding zeros that. mate nobody's gonna check yeah. yeah one million i have so many plaques I, I'm, I'm just swapped in them <laughs> yes uh, was... if you do go back to the archive i should probably say it was the 2010s it was a different time <laughs> yes, indeed, and, and and that's that's another thing. Uh, after we wrapped our fifth season, we took a five-year break. I'm not entirely sure why. We six just years, went, actually. Six years. Oh, it said um, the last video we uploaded said five years ago, but then YouTube is a massive liar. So I guess it's not entirely time. six years ago. No one, no one's keeping count. No, <laughs> we were young. That's what matters. <laughs> were we <laughs> younger? It's always relative. Which is dumber, I think. Anyway, so uh, the podcast format, as I said, started with just me phoning up Frederick and bitching for like an hour or so about random adventure game shit. Uh, yeah, so, I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was it was quite fun. Audio quality wasn't the best, but I okay. didn't. <laughs> now, and I'll, I'll say none of us enjoyed season two because that was when Frederick and I both drank heavily, and and then season I three. I enjoyed that. Well, the, the drinking heavily part, yes, but uh, it didn't make for fantastic content. Um, but then we brought on uh, the English patient, and he, <laughs> and he sort of brought us all back down to earth. And then we started bringing on guests. Uh, we've had the uh, immense pleasure of having Dave Gilbert on a few times. We've interviewed uh, Tex Murphy himself, Chris Jones. Wow. We got that schooled. We got schooled hard on classic adventure games like mainframe adventure games by none other than John Romero. That was mm. fucking wild. It's preferable to being blasted in the face with a super shotgun. <laughs> Which he also would have done given the opportunity. Um, so that's basically the, the format has sort of gone back and forth a bit. It's But the, the overall premise of the podcast, at least in its inception, was that we were two, then three, uh, completely uh, unqualified people who would give advice to adventure game designers on how they should do their games. And, <laughs> Which and, Dave and, Gilbert loves, by the way. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and, 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 and that is no exaggeration. Um, I've done a few uh, Adventure Jam 
games. Uh, Frederick was one of many project leaders on Space Quest Volhall Strikes Back, and Gareth wrote some text and dialogue for Stair Quest. But uh, other than that, we really have no credits to speak of in uh, the gaming sphere as such. We are the Absolutely. we are the backseat designers, which is where yeah, the big yeah, yeah. title comes from. Fear our name. Yes, yes, you will remember <laughs> that. Um, so honestly, uh, this is us getting back together after like half a decade's uh, interim uh, and uh, just seeing where shit takes us. We don't have any guests lined up. We don't have a plan. We really have nothing. So I'll just I'll just shoot the ball over to whoever wants to talk first. Uh, what have you guys been up to these past five or six years? Well, I think I should say before we start, if we end up uh, jumping over each other or talking absolute nonsense, it's because the two of us haven't had that many, uh, the two of us, the three of us, I can count, haven't had uh, <laughs> too much opportunity to uh, actually talk to each other for quite a long time. So this is, uh, I don't know, a group therapy session as much as it is uh, in massive scare quotes, entertainment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, 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 the great thing about that is that... Um, I think the the major curveball here is that for the first time we are actually all three of us finding ourselves in the same country, and uh, <laughs> rarely have we seen less of each other than since Gareth emigrated to Denmark and I moved to Zealand, and uh, I live approximately, I would say, ten to fifteen kilometers from you, trolls, and. Uh, I've seen this guy like once in the past couple of years. Yeah, it's just amazing. We are all like within spitting distance of each other. There's a, like an hour's train ride to where Gareth lives, and I could comfortably take like 30 minutes of train ride to meet up with Frederick. And it has never occurred to, well, it has occurred to us, but it's never actually materialized that we should all get in the same room. We are recording this online. We, we mm -hmm. simply cannot stand the sight of each other. I think you know we have to do like a, a, a coin toss to figure out who who had the most stuff happen to them uh, in the interim. I mean, I can start. Uh, yes, not please. terribly long after the last episode that we did together, I got married. At that point, my um, my wife to be was pregnant with our first son, and we enjoyed his company so That's much we decided to have a second Frederick. one. That's so the wrong order. It was marriage by gunshot. Yeah, I mean, on point, I should say. <laughs> so, <laughs> she blew off your kneecaps. I, 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 I don't don't bring John Romero into this. I don't subscribe to that whole. Uh, John Romero was at the wedding, <laughs> holding a shotgun. To um, but yeah, anyway, we uh, we uh, had two kids, got married, um, and you know, it's been blissful family man life ever since, basically. But there was always this. Thing missing so i'm very very happy that we finally managed to get this together uh in spite of of the uh of the terrible odds that we seem to be having i love i love the, i love how how frederick is like getting all warm and fuzzy on us and gareth just starts pissing himself with laughter it's like well i've, I've missed you guys ha <laughs> ha that was classic dry Danish humor of, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I've had a wife and a kids, but what I really missed <laughs> was talking to you guys. That, 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 was, that was a very coded fuck you, but I am here for it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, uh, Gareth, uh, other than leaving your home country behind, what have you been up to? God, yeah. Well, I think that's the big thing, isn't it? I've, um... Oh, there was this thing. Did you have this where nobody could leave the house for two years? Oh, that's right. Well, our PM didn't host parties or orgies, so no, we had true. a very we yeah. had a we had a slightly more civilized variation of the thing. Yes, our Prime Minister Caligula. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we won't get into British politics um, because there's there's no need for that. But yes, I emigrated. I have moved to Denmark. I now know that your names are not pronounced anything like how I was pronouncing your names before, uh, <laughs> but I have absolutely no intention of pronouncing them properly. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm living uh, in, a, in a lovely little town called uh, Ulense, mm -hmm. and I am learning how to swallow every single consonant I ever come into contact with. It's lovely. It's lovely. Yes, that is indeed how our language works. And also the R's uh, sort of sit in the back of the throat, like Klingon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, I, I I still can't get over the fact that it's Freyrich. I just it's, it does does not stick. That was actually very very nice. Good you job. Just it's your... just 
broke friend. a promise like 30 seconds after me. I did actually. That's true. That's true. Well, you know, my, uh, my, my, my Danish, my Danish tutor, uh, Bettina, uh, uh, has, has drilled into me how to get your R's and your G's in the right area. So I, I would, I would say Tom. Oh, that's, that's close enough. I'm sorry. Wait, I, I was just like, okay, my, 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 my language teacher, Bettina, has drilled into my ass. <laughs> to well, be fair, I almost well, kind of lost it when you talked about swallowing the R's. And I'm like... I have to swallow so much in this country. It is, it is unbelievable. Yeah, it's you don't great. want to go through customs ever. Uh, Yena was worse, but yes. Uh... <laughs> Because my my first Danish teacher was Jana, and she had to, she had to just sit me down and and explain how to pronounce the Danish word for German because I was doing some weird things with those vowels that really did not did not have to happen. But anyway, I'm going to go with fire controls. That sounds lovely. And uh, and and have you have you played any games in in that period of time? I have played a few. I was trying to think about this because I thought I thought you'd ask a question like that, Tolls. Thank you very much. I, um, yeah, I mean, I've uh, got. It's been a while. So there was um, uh, there was Stray. Did any of you play Stray, the one where you're a cat? Oh no, I've I've heard of it. I've I've seen it. It, it looks very nice. I love cats. I enjoyed that one immensely. Well, I mean, the, 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 the big elephant in the corner of the room and, you know, what kind of puts into perspective that it's been ages is that while we've been sitting on our asses waiting to do some variation upon this podcast again, we had a new Monkey Island game, which oh, I God, thought yeah. was absolutely amazing, but also kind of like, wow, you know, I never saw that coming and certainly not with Ron Gilbert in the, in the lead designer position. That was amazing, uh, and I have not actually played it yet. I've uh, been savoring the opportunity to do so because I'm. I want to do like a full retrospective of the Monkey Island series at some point on on my channel, which is going to be a hell of a time once I get to escape from Monkey Island. Uh, so I'm kind of savoring that. Uh, Spoiler: Guybrush Fleetwood is a woman. Oh God! You had to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing back all the old memes. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Yeah. You don't need to be reminded of some things. I, actually, I've played a few games uh, by uh, the glorious Francesco uh, Gonza. Francesco. 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 <laughs> you fucking Francesco. <laughs> He's Italian now. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Francisco <laughs> Gonzalez. I, have, uh, oh, I actually much... forgot to mention, if, if I may interject, one of the things that I did uh, when I married, because my wife is uh, from Uruguay, uh, been living in Denmark for more than three decades, but she was uh, born in in Uruguay, um, is that I decided to get a middle name. So I am actually also a Gonzalez now, though a much less talented one. <laughs> uh, but really, enjo- really, really enjoyed Shardlight. Um and uh, have recommended it to uh, several historians of medicine as a good uh, example of a narrative based around uh, medicine. That's uh, so that's that's short light with a D. Yes, yes, not sure. <laughs> oh, do, do you guys know I actually had a bit part in short light? You'll never guess which character I played. Were you the fetus? Oh yeah, you you do a, a scream or something, right? Yeah, I'm the I'm the guard who gets stabbed in the gut and then has his head cut off. Lovely. So my 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 lines are literally just <clears throat> and are, but I'm in I'm in Shardland. And I and, and thank you for recreating it here. That that was that was lovely. Oh, thank you. I did several takes. I I really got into the <laughs> mindset of the character. Absolutely. Professionalism. Well, you have got to give them options. I was also in um Lamplight City. But that's that one's even more obscure. We were um, actually all in, in Lamplight City, at least visually. I'm mm. there, and I know Gareth is there, and, and you're there too. Actually, a, a, a picture taken at my old apartment, if oh, I'm that's not mistaken. Right. That's right. We're one of the portraits hanging in one of the houses, I think. Uh, but uh, I don't know if I've ever told anyone this, and I don't know if Francisco wants me to tell it, but uh, he needed like a, a, a crowd noise of drunks 
uh, in, in one of the scenes. Just <laughs> so he came to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, he should have been there for season two. Uh, no, but he needed like a big like a big group of like uh, people stumbling around and such. I'm one of those, but I'm sort of buried in this big miasma of vomiting. Well, he's a lovely fellow. Sorry we got your name wrong, Francisco. <laughs> Francesca. I, I, work, I work with a guy called Francesco, and I have clearly... I can only hold one language in my head at a time, and <laughs> otherwise I just go off in random directions. So I, I do apologize. I'm, I'm I'm just grateful that none of you picked up when when Gareth said, "Oh, he's Italian now." I went Buenos Dias, which is <laughs> not Italian. <laughs> yeah, moving swiftly on, uh, Frederick, you already mentioned uh, Return to Monkey Island. Uh, what else have you been playing, if anything? I actually have, you know. Uh memories of sitting down and playing unavowed when that came out otherwise i oh, haven't yeah. actually got around terribly much to adventure games um Kids will i do think that. yeah i think when i became a dad <laughs> it became very very hard to sit down and do like immersive gaming which is sort of a you know requirement for me to get into an adventure game so i decided to usually plop down in front of the xbox at night and shoot shit you know Doom, Quake. There have been some excellent remasters coming out on the FPS front recently, and I really hope it'll extend to adventure games at some point. Um, yes. But, you know, that's mainly what I've been doing. Recently, I did decide to try to uh, to replay the Space Quest series chronologically. Kind of stuck at the moment, but it's, it's, it's <laughs> very, very nice to kind of take a trip back and see, okay, what did I miss? Um, what didn't I appreciate about these games that I do appreciate phenomenally uh, to begin with, um, but I think as we, you know, will wind up going along with this podcast, it's kind of going to reinvigorate my interest in in adventure games. Uh, anyway, you know, I, I, I've been I, I consider myself as having been out of it, and um, AdventureX last year, where I went with with trolls among others uh, sadly gareth uh, was not able to join was also just great you know that was kind of like we're 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 back you know mm-hmm. not in this way in front of the microphone we're back but it felt like recapturing something that kind of got lost for me back in 2018 so that was great yeah i i completely agree it's it's whenever it, one goes to one of these uh, conventions uh, uh, Adventure X, especially, it's it's like ah oh, ah oh, now I can breathe. I'm w- I'm with my people again. Yeah, and you know, on that subject, real talk, because you know I wanted to mention this, but um, I, I don't think it's any secret that I've been pushing very very hard for uh, reviving this podcast over the past couple of months uh, because I had a you know an epiphany at Adventure X, no less. Okay. Um, what basically happened was you know as as happens during these sort of things, your social meter kind of overflows at one point and you go and sit down in a corner and go Whew, to yourself and <laughs> gear up for the next couple of hours. <laughs> oh, and uh, I found that happening to me. And suddenly I'm joined by this guy called Matt Latham, who introduces himself as a podcaster. Uh, he runs a podcast called Ask Us About Loom, uh, apparently. At this point in time, anyway, the man had not actually played Loom. So, you know, that's a bold <laughs> naming choice. That's um, that's an even worse choice than ours. Uh, but we talked a bit back and forth, and, you know, I went, oh, I used to do an adventure game podcast with a couple of other guys, and he, he actually goes, backseat designers, right? And, you know, I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was listening a lot to you guys before I started. No one was actually doing this at that point, so you guys were a huge inspiration. I, I, you know, okay. people don't approach me with that kind of talk in general. Nothing I do in life tends to inspire anyone. So uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to play your your son this recording. I was going to say, too, but, yeah, <laughs> at some point in the future. Sons, plural, please. Son, yes. So anyway, we are joined by a third guy who. Um, who had actually been one of the panel hosts earlier that day. There was a panel with um, Tony Warren and Dave Gilbert were on it. I can't remember who else was, but it, one of the big panels with notable people on Probably it. Probably Francisco, but who cares? Possibly. No, Francesco. Francesco. Uh, Francesco. 
<laughs> and this guy who was hosting it. I write the games. Also, yeah, yeah, and you complain about names. Uh, also uh, does an adventure game podcast uh, called the Adventure Games Podcast. So, you know, even if we wanted to rebrand this as something else, the best name has kind of been taken now. Wow. And he basically says the same thing. This guy who just hosted this panel with uh, a bunch of legends and Francisco um, <laughs> uh, told me exactly the same thing. Oh, you guys were great. It was actually very funny. No one else was doing this. It was a huge inspiration. And I'm like, okay, well, thank you. My social meter is overflowing again as I pick my jar uh, <laughs> off the floor and excuse myself uh, because now I've got to find trolls. Uh, so, I, you know, fortunately, trolls is a very easy man to spot being 70 meters tall. Oh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I very, very quickly descend upon him that. and 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 tell him all of this. Uh, first thing out of his D- mouth is... Descend? Don't... Wait, did you, like, drop from the rafters or something? Because I can't remember that. Part. I wish. Um, first thing that comes out of Trolls' mouth is don't let it go to your head. Um, <laughs> which it wasn't really. I, I, I just thought it was uh, it was amazing. But, you know, I'm not getting a big head over it or anything. I don't but know why I said then that. Then what happens is that uh, I spot Charles Cecil. And I've always regretted not actually meeting Charles Cecil. At, at one point at Adventure X, I think it was 17, I was standing on the stairs and <laughs> Charles Cecil was immediately in front of me. And I'm so nervous that I, you know, that pat on the back, uh, finger on the shoulder, couldn't do it. I uh, couldn't actually <laughs> say hello to Charles Cecil and be. So this time I decided to rectify that. And, oh, uh, well, at, at least you didn't do what Bettina does to, um, to Gareth. I, but... th- there's no... There's no G's or R's. That that finger could have gone anywhere. There were no R's or or drilling or any sort of <laughs> thing. Um, but you know, we I introduced myself to Charles. As you do. There's no need for him to introduce himself, so we've got that over with. Uh, and yeah, he remembered the podcast. And the first thing out of we we did an interview with Charles. At one point. Ma- yeah, we did an interview with Charles, and there are many many interesting things coming out of people's mouths as, at this point. If you uh, mm. If you haven't noticed, because uh, Charles says, "Oh, are you going to invite me back on?" And you know, <laughs> fuck the thing about wow. not letting it go to my head. It's going to both heads, so that's where the monolithic erection <laughs> comes in. And I just realized we've got to get this uh, restarted somehow because it seems that, in spite of what we may have thought at that point, the original run, which was that we were mainly doing it for our own enjoyment, which was certainly a big part of it for me uh in in spite of that idea it seems that people actually enjoyed it and people actually got something out of it i've had a few similar experiences where um at the very first adventure x i'm uh, i attended i met a, a game designer called joel meyer who uh who went oh i listened to your special with um with sean mills and, and they, you know the one with dave gilbert and that really inspired me also i love how you kept taking the piss out of sean and his bundles so uh... <laughs> <laughs> now, let me be clear that's never going in a bundle <laughs> <laughs> which it which it was shortly thereafter <laughs> And I, yeah, I, also, I also love uh, just a quick interjection that apparently several people uh, independently told you that, oh, you were a great inspiration because no one had ever done this before. That there was a podcast with Francisco Gonzalez and Ben Chandler called the Blue Cup Tools Podcast, oh, which Blood did Cup, exactly oh, the same as we Well, did. I think the difference is that they're actually qualified to do it, whereas this mm-hmm. is all about our opinions. You may take them, you may leave them. We don't really care. It's about us shooting shit about adventure games. Like you mentioned earlier, we have no qualifications to be doing this. That's True. And I think that's what people found charming. It was a bunch of adventure gamers just talking adventure games for the fun of it. And mm-hmm. and that's probably what those guys meant when they said no one was doing it. Because, yeah, you're right. Our primary inspiration at the time, or yours at least, uh, was Blue Cup Tools. I mean, that, that's that's high praise. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone is listening to this who uh, descended upon Frederick from the rafters to, <laughs> to say these things. Um, lots of drilling, lots of descending. Yeah. Lots of horses. <laughs> lots of prostate exams. What, what I will say is if you can get hold of uh, Blue Cup Tools, do. Um, it's brilliant for just hearing people's thought process as they try to go through a project. 
So if you've got any kind of project in your life of any kind whatsoever, I found it really, really helpful when I was doing my PhD and, um, and, and later kind of research projects, just hear people talking about being creative, trying to find new ways of doing things, constantly learning new skills, uh, and just spending time with friends. It was, uh, it, it was a great podcast. I hope they uh, they continue to revive it. Every now and again, the feed will just update. It's like, oh, Ben, Ben and Francisco are back, and that, that's <laughs> always a, that's always a nice feeling. And and there there have been many adventure game podcasts uh, since then, uh, all inspired by us, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're the OGs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, uh, Pushing Up Roses has a podcast uh, called Save Your Game about adventure games, <laughs> and that's a good uh, title. I'm sure there are others. Uh, but, but yeah, so, so it's kind of like it has a resurgence. I, I will, however, uh, quickly um, reassure everyone it's not because we feel like we're being pressured into comp- competition or anything. We just, this has been ongoing for a long time, as, as Frederick said. He's been pushing us real hard the way Bettina pushes Gareth's prostate. Um, mm-hmm. t- I'm sorry, I'm not going to let that go. Um, so, so this has been a long time coming in. The, and, and as you've probably picked up by now, uh, we really didn't have a plan going into this inaugural episode, this episode zero, as we call it. This is literally just us, you know, reminding each other what we've been up to. And for future <laughs> episodes, I would assume we would have some sort of concrete topic to discuss or perhaps even have a guest on we oh, have, yeah we didn't ask what you were doing what are you doing tolls what's happened to you in the past five years you've had a kid yeah uh and that's about it really <laughs> <laughs> uh no i've been i've been having fun uh with uh um the channel people are probably listening to this on perhaps uh has uh, steadily risen in infamy and uh i've f- uh, been invited to a few uh conferences or, or um, events and such and uh, got to hop up with a few adventure game legends uh which i won't brag too much about but um, oh i think you should brag i think you've you earned the brag. right to brag i just bragged you can brag <laughs> 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 well it's 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 all been fairly well documented on my channel anyway because i i have no filter when it comes to senseless bragging um and we should probably also mention that uh, I joined your band because you started a, a oh, game yeah. music band with John Paul Sapsford and uh, m- uh, multiple uh, people joining, including me. Uh, um, so I guess the uh, the question is, so where, where do you guys uh, want to take this? Uh, we have had some discussion of what to do format-wise. Uh, honestly, I... Th- I'm, and now we're just spitballing on the air, really. But I think we should just like compile a list of things we want to talk about. And if people have a subject that they want us to talk about, they're free to leave a comment. But uh, other than that, it's just um, business as usual in a way, or business as unusual. Hey, you know, I do want to make a point of saying that uh, I don't take um, Charles's suggestion that we invite him back on lightly. I think um, oh, we're, we're not, not going to start doing interviews until we feel a bit more comfortable and we're back in a rhythm where we feel, okay, this, this fits well into well within uh, our individual lives. Um, when when Gareth can we... actually sit down comfortably after visiting Bettina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my, my Danish, le- my Danish lessons are finished now. Apparently I'm fluent, uh, which is news oh. to me. Oh, is that what you call it now? <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, this is a very serious and, and very well thought yeah, out. I'm fluid too when yeah. someone tickles my prostate. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so that's where the mammoth erection comes in. No, that's where it ends. <sighs> nice. People must like us because if not, the, the, the cancellation possibilities, oh. even, even from the 2010s. <laughs> we went from Charles Cecil MBE to cock and ball torture within the span of half a minute. Medical cock and ball tur- a tournament. Tournament? Tur- <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah well i'm i'm you know huh. i'm sticking with adventure x and possibly adventure game fanfare i don't want to join that mm-hmm. convention mm-hmm. you're sticking mm-hmm. with something else but yes mm-hmm. um so we are all dying to play more adventure games and talk about adventure games with the yeah. you know with with the hindsight of you know as as we have matured over you know again the past half of half of a decade as you can uh, tell as you can tell um and and sort of uh, not only 
talk about what's you know coming out. Adve- the adventure games are even more prolific. This man will not stop with the penis puns. I oh, I didn't even catch that one. That was good. Um, yeah, but I mean, there are more adventure games coming out than than ever, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, we still have you know all the old classics um, burnt into our brains. Frederick said he was playing through the Space Quest games again. Um, so there's there's plenty to talk about. Um, we just have to sort of organize that in, in some capacity. As you can tell, this episode is like really rambly, sort of how you do <laughs> kind of thing. But uh, we, I have a script. I don't know about you guys. Really? Well, <laughs> no. It's, it's been it's been amazing that your interjections have been scripted and you've managed to fit them at just the right time, which I'm very impressed with. I know trolls very very well. <laughs> yeah, I think we all know him a bit too well. Yeah, he actually did my prostate exam. I, just, I also love the fact that we, we've sort of been extolling our virtues as as mature elder statesmen of, of adventure game podcasting, and and so far this has been piss and prostate jokes. <laughs> I turn forty next year. Wow. Really? Oh, baby! Oh, baby! I turn forty four. Give me a break. Yeah, I'm stuck at thirty six right now. So um, I'm at that point where I feel lucky. I remember turning thirty and going, "Oh shit!" But now it's like. Well, I'm still younger than you guys, so fuck you. <laughs> that is. I think, uh, think thinking of sort of comparisons between us, and that, that's, let's not move to the obvious. I think one of my favourite <laughs> ad- memories of Adventure X is meeting people where you two weren't in the room, hmm. and these people looking at me and thinking, and actually saying, "You're not that short." <laughs> I mean, you, you could have comfortably stopped at uh, meeting people when you guys weren't in the room, but <laughs> you you went you went the extra mile. Um, yes, me and Frederick are quite vertically mm. challenged in the opposite way of what you might think. I, I've kind of missed your sound. But, oh yeah, we should probably mention that. That was what that was also a running thing in our old podcast. Uh, Gareth usually wouldn't talk un, until the forty-five minute mark, and uh, his only interjections were done through his soundboard, which kept That's expanding. And to, to be fair, getting a word in while you two are rabbiting on is very, very difficult <laughs> and uh, quite embarrassing for me, given that you you two are rabbiting on in uh, in at least your second language, and I'm sort of sat in the corner <laughs> going, um, I um. Yeah, well, that's that's par for the course, too. I think we established earlier that I'm not rabbiting on about anything. Well, you have two children, so you must have rabbited someone. Oh, well, I did rabbit in that context, but I meant orally rabbiting. Well, okay, I did that too at the time, but in a in a podcast context, you walked straight into that one. I wonder what the Gallagher brothers are up to. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we should probably mention that as well. We yeah, are the, recording the, this. The second most important reunion of the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and 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 to be fair, we bicker slightly less than the Gallagher brothers. Uh, but only slightly. Only slightly. But uh, I mean, just just to sort of uh, roll this into a nice little bow, it's it's that we have had, as I said, half a decade to reflect on things and, and there have <laughs> to atone why, why, why are you laughing uh no we have we have matured slightly as you can tell <laughs> like you know like geez not like humans <laughs> and 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 there are uh there is there's no shortage of uh games being released to talk about there's mm-hmm. still no shortage of adventure game tropes to talk about parser games are making a comeback has anyone noticed that not everyone at once, please. No, no. Uh, I, I do not. I, I do not understand the word "come back." Please try again. <laughs> it's what happens when Bettina tells. No, never mind. Um, it's... <laughs> Are you regretting taking part in this, Gareth? Yeah, yeah. But I again, to to properly regret it, I would need you to have expected something different. <laughs> that's true and yet and it's it is also true that you were uh, very reluctant to accept our invitation as co-host back in season three and you somehow stayed on yeah i need to learn how to say no um anyway parser games are making a comeback uh julian mm-hmm. minamata just released uh, the crimson diamond oh recently. yes um and we've had sort of a resurgence of uh like old school, hitherto forgotten adventure game mechanics making sort of a comeback. Um, 
deaths. We, uh, we also there was also a guy just a couple of days ago who ported well or remade rather I guess King's Quest Six in the AGI engine. Yes, exactly. Which is, and it took him eighteen years. I mean, imagine spending eighteen years on that. That's quite a feat, honestly. I'm I haven't played it yet, but I'm impressed by the um, by the accomplishment in itself. Yeah, I've I've played it myself. Played a stream on it a couple of days ago at the time of recording this, and uh, he's actually in my SQH Discord, and uh, he sort of used uh, my playthrough and as well as other people's playthrough as a sort of uh, beta test. Uh, you know, figuring out little nooks and crannies where where, where stuff might have gone wrong, and he's uh, you know been posting fixes for it. Um, also, interestingly, uh, I did a video recently about. Uh, AGI being playable on a Game Boy Advance. There's this very old interpreter for the Game Boy Advance uh, released back in, I think it was 2004 or something. And it was sort of abandoned like 90% through and, uh, you know, no one's ever uh, done anything with it since then. It was open source, but I, I ran into a few bugs when I was playing Space Quest 1, for instance. And uh, my Discord is just this magical, weird wonderland of nerds because the second I did that video and I complained about some of the bugs in there, someone just hopped in and said, you know, downloaded the source code and went, okay, I'll fix that. So now there's a fixed version of <laughs> of this interpreter that was released in 2004. The, was- things, the things that we can do now, just because a lot of us are older and have skills that we clearly didn't have when we were seven years old and software that we obviously didn't have and computers powerful enough to do this kind of thing, that the... the I, I always uh, find it fascinating. I mean, it, it was it was fascinating and amazing when uh, Vogel Strikes Back came back. Um, <laughs> yes, and uh, just just to see, yeah, that kind of thing of oh yeah, I'll, I'll just fix this particular bug in a forty year old <laughs> game. I, I I I am still in awe uh, at the fact that we we can do this. It is the the amount of human effort that has gone into the most inconsequential thing i love it <laughs> that, that there is nothing better as far as i'm concerned yeah and adventure game fans are really like like at the forefront of this stuff because we had that whole period at the end of the 90s start of the 2000s where we were like uh, no adventure games aren't dead yeah and everyone else was telling us yes they are dead so ever since we've been on this like crusade to prove that adventure games still have you know life in them and all that um and 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 much of that effort has been spent uh, touching up old classics, making them playable. There's a you know remasters done of adventure games, uh, so you can play them on your mobile phone. Scum VM works on your mobile phones. Um, you know all, all of this stuff is. Have, some someone did a point and click remake of King's Quest Four and removed all the dead ends from it, which was a very nice gesture. Well, you know, it's just the spirit of the times. Uh, there's a lot of retro stuff going on. Um, the Cold War and the threat of nuclear annihilation is making a comeback. We said we wouldn't talk politics. <laughs> we talked penises. I think, what's, I think what's great, though, is that we, I mean, not that this is ever supposed to be a proper discussion, but we've reached the point now where the technology has reached a point where you can make the game you kind of want to make to a certain extent. Like if you want to make an adventure game, all the tools are there and you can build it. And it's we have to remember that when when Space Quest came out and when King's Quest came out, they were pushing at the very limits of what a computer could do. Yes. Whereas now you you don't have to have like God knows how many polygons and ray tracing in an adventure game. You can just get on get on a sketch pad, draw some things, scan them in, animate them in uh, in a game engine, and you, you, you're on your way. Um, Free game engine. Uh, yeah. So I, I just I just I just love that uh, that people are being creative and they're writing stories and they're making art and they're doing all of this kind of stuff and then making the game that they kind of want to make rather than the one that is necessarily sort of dictated by commercial interests or the one that is. Uh, the thing that's going to push things to the very limit because that's what the AAA studios want. Um, and yeah, I, 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 am, I am glad to be at a time where, as a, as a slightly older gentleman, as we've already established, <laughs> that I can sit down and play a game that might take me a few days to just really sit and enjoy as a as a story, like I would a good book or a, or a good film or TV series. Um, 
So, but we're not here to be uh, serious. So if you want to edit in a cop <laughs> joke at this point, I'm, I'm more than happy for you to do so. Oh, we have tons of those, but I, I, I will just jump on the serious train for a brief moment and, and say, you know, di- digital distribution had a lot to do with that. Uh, no longer are we beholden to the interests of publishers and their whims and, and all that sort of stuff, which is frankly what led to the so-called death of adventure games massive air quotes there um and and of course this is nothing new this is what uh, dave gilbert was doing when he founded yg and i and released this first game i think it was 2006 or something like that um and has since you know everything's just been steadily climbing from there it was a license to print money <laughs> let me be clear i'm not saying that there aren't um commercial um kind of restrictions it'll be, it'll be news to dave gilbert that he can make any game that he wants and he doesn't have to worry about market uh, market <laughs> forces or actually having customers or any of that kind of stuff i'm not suggesting that at all oh no no but uh, no. but I, th- I think i think there's much more scope to make something that you want to make and if that then becomes something that you can build a business off the back of great if it's just an art project between you and a collective of people that's great too it's like it, it can be like independent music obviously on a different kind of uh, kind of scale and i'm just glad that there's a market enough out there that we're getting professional products and i'm glad that there's enough out there that amateurs can come up with just great things to play and to talk about and yeah, yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why we're back, isn't it? Because we missed that. Yeah, we missed that. And also yeah. there's there's more of it now than there ever was. I mean, there was, there was certainly a lot of it when we started the podcast. Um, but uh, it, it seems like there's there's even more. And it seems like like what you're saying, there's a greater market for uh, the you know single dev or the small teams instead of you know having large teams. I mean, I know I know of course YGI is technically just two people, but uh, uh, I mean. Uh, Going back to the Crimson Diamond, which just released uh, uh, a week ago or so, that's, that's a single dev. Julia Minamata did everything on that, I think. And we have people like Tom Hardwich, who did Lucy Dreaming, which is just a gorgeous adventure game. He did that pretty much single-handedly as well. Uh, so it's just it's just a lovely time when uh, not only are we no longer beholden to publishers and their whims, but also we are able to use uh, mediums that... Uh, you know, not not the sort of you know, like printed publication telling us what's cool or not. Uh, we've actually reached sort of a boiling point where there's so much cool shit going around that it's hard to get noticed, uh, especially with Twitter being the shit show that it is. That, that's that's why Dave has been systematically going through and assassinating other adventure game devs, which is really uh, not <laughs> cool. But you know, the the the, the market dictates. Yeah, he does have a tremendous fondness for for. Manslaughter. Um, well, that's why he's having to flee New York. Yes. Yeah. I do also feel one thing that's great is that the publishers are kind of on the mend because if you told me back when we did the first run of this podcast that in a couple of years Disney are actually going to allow Ron Gilbert to do another Monkey Island game, I wouldn't yeah. have believed you. But nah. but it, it honestly seems like the world at large is waking up to realize how oh, some great things were done in terms of narrative back then. And I think when we stopped the podcast initially uh, we were at a point where a lot of people were certainly feeling like in the um, uh, AAA scene that shit was being bogged down by stuff like microtransactions and stuff you know mm. me- mechanics that were toxic honestly were getting in the, yeah. in the way of telling a good story so it feels like even a big actor such as Disney uh actually has the guts to go back to a property like monkey island reassess that and go there was actually some good stuff here can we do more of this you know i think as as soon as return to monkey island hit the shelves you know i haven't been proved right about this but i kind of thought well now the sky's the limit you know now anything can happen pigs can fucking fly if this happens um, <laughs> there, there were definitely there definitely was a sense uh, at the time that we finished the podcast last time around there, there was a lot of um ip hoarding from some of the big corporations yeah. and it, we got i got that feeling that nobody wanted to do anything with it there was telltale were doing some stuff but i mean that that kind of didn't really kind of go anywhere because I don't think the, again, the IP hoarders didn't get the immediate return that they wanted. And then rather than release this stuff to people who could do something with it, they just did nothing with it. But yeah, I think you're right. I think the return of monkey Island, so to speak, um, (laughs) kind of, I think it does make you think that something can be done. Yeah. 
our very first episode of season one was about uh, the Sierra revival, which was, oh. was a new thing at that point. You know, someone <laughs> took the Sierra brand, tried to revive that. They did it some sort of puzzle game, and then they did an episodic King's Quest game, which you know, I've only played episode one, but it wasn't actually half bad. But it seems that as soon as they were done with that, they just kind of, you know, folded Probably because, like you said, the immediate return and the immediate interest weren't there at that time. I, th- I think it's a very, very stark contrast when you put that shit show up against Disney reviving Monkey <laughs> Island. But do you know what the story about the uh, Sierra revival was? It was like one dude at Activision who uh, got a, like a corner offers or something, and 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 just said, "I'm going to revive Sierra," and everyone. At- you know, you like saying this in the lunchroom and everyone was going, yeah, 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 you, you, Dave, you, you do whatever you want to. So he just went in his corner office and, and restarted the Sierra brand and, and hooked, uh, you know, uh, released three games. And then I don't know, either he got off cocaine or he got fired or I, I don't know what the fuck happened, but that oh, was, people was noticed it was actually Ken Williams in disguise. <laughs> oh, no, no. See, Ken Williams has actually softened quite a bit, uh, over the years. Um, he, he put out his, uh, his memoir book, um, and where he's just like, pretty frankly, I mean, there are some passages in there where I still go, you what? Um, but like, like he expected his, his, his best employees to be ready to pick up the phone at 4 a.m. on a Saturday and, and, you know, run straight into work if that's what they were uh, told to do. I think that's fair when everyone is running off. Libel alert. Uh, yeah. And, and, <laughs> oh, the eighties were a hell of a drug. But, uh, but yeah, it's a, but, but he has, he's like, he, he's, he's become very reflective on the past and how you know he was racing towards some sort of unattainable goal of being like the disney of uh, computer games and it just you know in the end it exploded in his face uh that sort of thinking is is way behind us now uh no one is going into game development thinking that they're gonna you know buy up companies and and certainly not in adventure games we're not you know consolidating big companies and all that well some people some people have been trying but the less said about those assholes the better i was gonna say the the creatives may be going with that kind of attitude i think there are still plenty of people in the tech world who have absolutely no intention of creating anything just owning stuff Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So you and can that, take your Bitcoin and shove it up your bit ass. Oh, yeah. But there's, I mean, uh, going back to uh, Activision, for instance, uh, sitting on the rights to the Sierra library, everything except for Lisa Sir Larry, uh, and, and doing that for years and years, and all they did with it was just put the games on, on Steam, of, you know, in, in the collection packages. Didn't even do anything with them. They just took the old collection CD-ROMs that Sierra put out way back in the day and shoved them on Steam and that was it. And they just made, like, passive income for, from all the nostalgia nerds. Activision had no Which is still a better, a better situation than we had before where we had to pirate everything. Um, although, <laughs> who knows where that money actually ended up going. I'm, I'm guessing that Al Lowe didn't see a penny of, uh, of that. Oh, absolutely not. He was even told to knock it off when he put his uh, source code of Lisa Suit Larry 1 on eBay. Because uh, even though Activision didn't own the copyright to eBay, uh, sorry, <laughs> to Lisa Suit Larry, um, and it's, it somehow ended up in the hands of Codemasters. But uh, they, they said that, oh, well, it's it's made in AGI. So there's probably some sort of code there that's proprietary, and we probably own that. So could you please knock it off? Anyway, my point was that since Activision did absolutely nothing with the Sierra IPs other than, you know, throw them on Steam and, you know, have one guy in a corner office revive the brand for a blip, um, they, Activision got sold to Microsoft recently. And the dudes at Microsoft have been sort of going, oh, Sierra, oh, that was that was a thing, wasn't it? Yeah, we'd be interested in looking at the IPs again and see what we can do with them. So there's a, oh, there's a, you know, some some good stuff per, per chance, even in in the vast you know corporate hallways of facelessness. I don't know, but I'm more interested, honestly, in in you know the one man developer, the one person developer scene. Um, yeah, I think the takeaway from from this is that we may be at an opportune moment where we thought we were going to be when we started the podcast initially, because you know. The idea of bringing Sierra back at that time, before we knew what it was, held great promise. Now this holds greater promise on a greater scale. Um, so I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, and I think on that note, uh, we'll uh, we'll let 
we'll let Gareth round this off. Because uh, we've been going on for an hour, and we kind of promised uh, each other before we started that uh, we we try to keep these episodes relatively concise. To try uh, and be civil, yeah. We're yeah. probably going to edit out a few cock jokes. No. Uh, no, well. that's, no. Well, then we're going to edit out some of the stuff around the cock jokes. <laughs> you mean the pubic hair? <laughs> so, if you want to keep up with the show, I suppose I would normally at this point say follow us on various forms of social media. I think those accounts have been dead for quite a long time. You're probably listening to this on Trolls' YouTube channel. Keep listening to it on Trolls' YouTube channel. You'll also be able to join Trolls' Discord, Space Quest Historian. That's where you can probably find us. You'll at least find Trolls there and everything will be fine. Yeah, Fred's there too. Eventually, we're going to set up an RSS feed, so if you just want to listen to our dulcet tones, you can listen to that. Um, But as for now, uh, YouTube is the home of everything uh, that we're doing. Uh, I guess all that is remains to say is uh, say goodbye, Froek. Bye. Say goodbye, Twals. What happened to our website again? Uh, Right, so uh, we are saying goodbye, but we do have to now give a uh, disclaimer. What happened to our website was I emigrated and my credit card expired and I forgot that uh, the website was tied to my old credit card. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's all dead. Now the website is gone. Uh, (laughs) Archive.org is the place where you can find all the old stuff. Uh, there uh, and it's goodbye from me and also the uh, youtube.com slash backseat designers if you for some reason want to listen to the old shit okay I'm genuinely saying okay we're done now. bye yeah we're done bye bye <laughs>